Hey there, Saki here from Saki Tech, and in today's video, I will give you over 50 plus tips and tricks for the Samsung Galaxy Note 5. This is an amazing phone, and it is full of rich features. So whether you want to enhance your ownership by discovering all the tips, tricks, and hidden features, or simply want to know everything about this beautiful smartphone in case you want to buy one, this is the video to watch and learn from. So let's dive right in and we will cover everything, including all of the S Pen features so you can master this device. All right, so tip number one, let's take a look at the basics. If you pinch the screen, it brings up the customization menu. From here, you've got four options. You can change the wallpaper, you can change the widgets, or you can change the entire theme of your phone as well as the screen grid. So if I tap on the screen grid, what it's gonna allow you to do is you can have a four by four screen. So we have four icons vertically and four icons horizontally. You can also do four by five. So you have five verticals and four horizontals, and you can do five by five. You get five icons this way, five icons that way. Okay, so that's number one. Number two, you can change the entire theme of your phone by tapping themes right over here. So basically, if you tap this, you can also go to the theme store, and from the theme store, you can download a lot more than you can imagine. Some of them you gotta pay a couple bucks for, most of them are free. So let's go back in here and tap on high tech. Simply click apply. So as you can see, you have a brand new theme over here and you have different icons. And if you go into settings, you've got different accent colors. If you go into settings here, you'll have different icons and different colors for every single thing. So this is a great way to customize your device to your preference. And of course, if you wanna go back to the good old uh, TouchWiz interface, you simply go back to themes, tap on default, click apply, apply, and you're done. Now, if we go back into the settings, as you can see, all the accent colors are different. So if I go into the settings, as you can see, we have blue background and different icon colors for everything. So when you change the theme of your phone, it changes just about everything. Now, one absolutely fantastic and my favorite tip is the one-handed operation mode. So if we go into the settings, if we go into display, you will see an option called one-handed operation. If you tap it, You've got two options to enable. Okay, so let's enable them both. And let me show you what this does. So once you enable one-handed operation, all you have to do is triple tap on the home icon, right over here, the home button. One, two, three. And that's going to reduce the size of the screen so you can use this thing with only one hand. If you want to have it left justified, just tap over here. And if you want to have it right justified, just tap over here. So that's left justified, and you can use this as if you were using the phone in complete, total, full screen. You can pull down the uh, notifications panel, you can pull it up, you can tap the home icon, go back home, and when you're done using, the, using this mode, you can tap return to full screen, brings you right back to the normal mode. Now when I go back into the settings, you'll see that I enabled two options. So we looked at the reduced screen size. Now let's take a look at the one-handed input. What this allows you to do is it allows you to, when you're holding the phone with just one hand, allows you to use your thumb on your keyboard. So if I set up, if I go into the messages application, and if I tap new messages, the keyboard comes up left justified. So if I was holding the phone like this, I can use my thumb to type on the keyboard without having to use all my fingers or two of my hands. And if you're holding the phone with your right hand, you can actually right justify this. So you can use your right thumb to type right over here in this area. So as you can see, by doing this, I can use one thumb to type everything on this phone. This is a fantastic feature. And of course, once you're done with these things, you go back into the settings and you go into, and I'm gonna show you one more tip right now. So let's say you wanna go back into the one-handed mode options. All you have to do is instead of digging into the menu, you can tap search. And by using search, you can actually search for settings within the phone's settings menu. So as you can see, I did a recent search, which was for one-handed operation. If I tap it, it's going to take me right into that menu. And from here, I can disable the ones that I do not want. Oh, and one more thing I wanna show you guys quickly is if you go into any folder, you can change the color of that folder by tapping this icon right over here. So let's go from green to orange. 
and as you can see that folder is now orange again if you create a brand new folder by dragging and dropping give the folder a name just X and tap this color palette right over here and you can give this thing any color that you want alrighty so that's another way to customize your screen and actually color code your folders as you desire now one of the biggest features of the Samsung Galaxy Note 5 is the ability to take quick notes on the go and this is how it works so let's say your phone is in your pocket and it is turned off and you're walking down the street and you see something interesting and you need to jot a quick note down what you can do is you can quickly pull out the S Pen and take an immediate note right on your phone without even ever having to turn it on once you do take the note you can actually erase the message you just took by using the eraser on the top and you can rewrite the message to fix your mistake and once you're done you tap save and that actually saves that note for quick access later this is a brilliant way to take notes on the go now obviously this is a note 5 so one of the main attractions is the S Pen so let's dive into some details and talk about the S Pen options so if you go to your settings and if you scroll over to device under device you have a complete suite of S Pen options let's talk about these really quickly so tap in and the first thing you see is you see the air command option and then let's go right inside and what the air command is if you bring your S Pen close to the screen and if you tap the button it brings up the air command menu alrighty and from here you actually can customize the air command menu so first and foremost you can enable or disable this floating icon that you see right over here for quick and easy access and also you can take this icon and you can put this icon anywhere alrighty I can take this icon and I can put it right over here and anytime I tap it it will bring up air command so let's hide that really quick and let's just disable it and as you can see it disappeared now the other thing I want to talk about is the shortcuts so basically if you bring up the air command menu by default you've got three options you've got the action memo you've got the smart select and you've got the screen right on top of that you can add up to three shortcuts to the apps that you please so if there is an app that you use often you can simply add it to one of these three shortcuts right over here alrighty so let me show you how that is done tap on shortcuts and basically you pick the option that you want you pick the app that you want let's just say camera you tap on it and it goes into the shortcuts right over here and if there's an app that you do not want you can tap this red bar and that removes that shortcut so let me just tap on this guy and let me just bring up air command really quick now as you can see I've got the Amazon Kindle the camera and Chrome as a shortcut on my air command so this is amazing not only do you have the basic air command preset functions you also can add three new shortcuts and the third option over here is called detach S Pen to turn on so basically when you pull your pen out from your phone do you want this command menu right over here to pop up every single time or not if you don't want it disable this and you can bring up air command by using this pen by pressing this button over here or you can simply have this floating icon enabled which will also serve the purpose of launching the air command menu all right so let me just disable this for a minute and let's go back and the next thing I want to talk about is the air view air view is pretty amazing let's go inside make sure it is turned on and what this allows you to do in certain applications you can use S Pen to hover over information and then you get a quick preview snippet pop-up that you can actually inspect so let me give you an example let's go to the gallery application right over here gallery and these are the pictures that I have on the phone right now without even touching the screen I can hover the screen over the screen and it's going to give me a quick preview it's going to be a little pop-up of what's inside okay so let's go over here let's go back and take a look at this there we go if you tap it it pulls the full picture out back in the settings you can do the same thing with the calendar okay you can do with the gallery you can do the same thing with your video player application if you hover the pen over hyperlinks on a website it gives you a quick preview of where that hyperlink points to so that is the air view let's go back over here 
and let's take a look at the pointer. So basically when I am uh, hovering my S Pen on the screen you'll see a little pointer that shows up on the screen. Now some people find that annoying that's why there's an option to disable it. So if I go back in here go to S Pen and I tap pointer off when I hover my um, thing over the screen it's not going to work anymore. It's not going to show the little pointer that hovers over the screen. Not a bad option. So let's go right back in go to settings go to S Pen and over here it says you can turn off screen memo. So basically that's the thing I just showed in the beginning. You can take a note with your S Pen without turning the device on. Now you can actually disable that option simply by tapping this and you can no longer take notes on the go. This option over here is my favorite. It's called S Pen Alerts. Basically if you pull out the S Pen and you put it on the table and you forget about it, you'll take your phone and you'll start to walk away. What's going to happen though is the phone is going to detect that the S Pen is not attached to it and that you're moving away from it so it's going to start alerting you saying that hey you're forgetting your S Pen go get it before you forget it which is fantastic because these things cost a lot of money so this thing could run you for thirty to forty dollars and you do not want to leave this thing behind. Now one more thing the S Pen does produce sound and vibration it gives you sound and vibration feedback as you use the pen on a daily basis you can turn those things off if you do not want to hear sounds or get vibration feedback. So that is all about the S Pen and S Pen customization tips and tricks. And let me just quickly show you the Air Command menu. So if you do launch the Air Command you have three preset options. You have the Action Memo. If you tap this you can take a quick note and you can click Save and you can move on. And if you also tap this thing you can use the Smart Select which allows you to select anything on the screen. So let's tap that thing and you can pick the shape of the selection. So you can go oval and then you can select anything on the screen and save that as a screenshot to your gallery or to your scrap book. You can also share this thing if you want to. So save this in the gallery and if I go into the gallery it's saved right over here. Not a bad option. And finally you can bring up the Air Command menu and look at the third option which is screen right. As soon as you tap this it takes the screenshot off the screen that you were currently on and then you can start writing on it, you can annotate this, you can edit it and then you can save this into your gallery or save into your scrap book. And that covers the Air Command menu. Now on the main screen there's one option you'll never see right off the bat. What you have to do is you have to swipe to the left and the briefing window will become available and it is powered by Flipboard. So here you can read news and you can customize this by tapping this icon over here. Allows you to pick the kinds of news that you want. Would you like business? Would you like technology? Would you like sports? And you can disable the ones that you don't want so they do not show up on your feed. So here's the briefing feed. Now some people don't like this. It's very easy to disable it. Go back to the home screen pinch the screen, scroll over and simply uncheck briefing and briefing has now disappeared. So if you go back out here and try to roll over nothing is going to show up. So the next option I want to talk about is the camera. So if you double tap the home button it quickly launches the camera. Now this is an option you can enable or disable based on your needs. If you want to enable it you go into settings. By the way it is enabled by default. But if you want to disable it, you disable quick launch under the settings when you're in the camera. So if you tap this and turn it off, if you double press the home button, the camera is not going to launch. I recommend that you keep it on so you can quickly launch the camera without losing a moment. You can take a fast picture. Now while we're here, I want to show you one more thing. You can basically use voice control to control your camera. So make sure voice control is turned on and when it is, here are the options. So you can say things like smile, cheese, capture or shoot to take a picture just by using your voice remotely from a distance. And you can also say record video and that's going to record a video again just by using a voice command. Let me give you an example. So if I go back out here, smile and as you can see it took a quick snapshot. Shoot, capture, record video. 
and as you can see in that instance we started to record a video and the other thing you can do is you can combine voice commands with the timer on the camera so on the top here you'll see some options if you tap them it says would you like to enable the timer you can say yes let's do two seconds and let's do a capture and as you can see just by using my voice command I can actually combine that with the timer so that's a perfect way to take pictures from a distance of yourself or your friends in a group now one more thing you need to know about the camera is at the bottom here you've got the modes okay if you tap the modes you get all these different beautiful options to shoot things you can do slow motion recording you can do fast motion recording, you can do live broadcast directly to YouTube, but you also have this pro mode. And in this pro mode, what you can do is you can manually adjust all the settings for your camera. You can change the ISO, you can change the shutter speed, you can manually focus in and out of subjects and all that jazz that only comes normally with a pro camera. So for example, at the bottom here, I can tap on ISO and that allows me to change it to what I please. So I can set ISO 100, ISO 200, and I can even keep this auto. So remember, in the modes, you have all these beautiful options, and you can always tap download, which is going to take you to the store from where you can even download more shooting modes. Just tap and download the one that you like. So let's go back in here. I'm going to show you a couple more things in the settings over here. Now, when you're recording video, you do have the option to change the type of video you're recording. So I'm sure you guys heard about the 4K video options. If you want to record 4K, you have to enable it by tapping here before you start to record the video so you can get the 4K resolution. And of course, you can go back in here and you can do full HD at 60 frames per second or full HD at 30 frames per second. Now 60 frames per second will record a more fluid and smooth video whereas the 30 frames per second will not be as smooth and fluid. It will take less hard drive space on your phone. And one more thing in the camera, by default the grid lines is disabled. So if I go back out here, we've got no grid lines. If I tap the settings, press on, I now have grid lines that allow me to better align a shot. So make sure you guys turn that on. All right, so the next thing I want to talk about is customization. So if you pull the notifications panel down, on the top, you've got some quick settings. So you have two pages of these quick settings, and you can click edit to customize the order in which you would like to have these things spread out. So for example, if I like the flashlight to be in first position, I simply drag and drop it, and it becomes the first thing on the quick toggles panel. So if I click done, now the flashlight is here, and if I tap this, it turns on the flashlight. And I can turn it off, and then I can click edit one more time. And everything that you see on the top here is enabled, and everything you see at the bottom here is disabled. So if there's an option that you like down here, you have to drag and drop it and bring it to the top. So for example, S Finder is something I never use. Oops, let's go back in here. So edit. So S Finder is something I never use. So I'm going to drag and drop that to the unused area. And then I can take this power saving mode and I can put it right over here. Okay, so that's how you customize your quick toggle panel. So anything that you think is important, you can pull it and put it right over here for quick and easy access. And of course, a couple other things you can do here is, as you can see, if I tap this thing, it turns off the Wi-Fi. If I tap it again, it turns on the Wi-Fi. I have one more option. If I tap and hold, it takes me into the detailed options for that setting that I just tapped. Alrighty, so if I pull this down, and if I go right over here, I can tap Bluetooth, and that enables Bluetooth. But then I can also go back in there, tap and hold, and that takes me into the full settings of my Bluetooth option. So go back right out, and if I pull this one more time, I just want to show you one more thing. You do have the brightness slider here. So just by sliding this to the front and back, you can increase and decrease the brightness of your phone on the go quickly and easily. That's one thing I love about these Samsung phones and these Android phones. Everything that you see on the phone is customizable, including the entire theme of your phone. 
if you so please. Now let's go into the settings real quick. And I want to show you something that you can disable. So as you can see over here, we have something called the quick settings. This quick settings tab is a tab that you can enable and customize based on your needs. So if I tap more over here and I click edit quick settings, I can basically disable all these things. Go back out there and now the quick settings has disappeared because I haven't enabled it. I unchecked all the options. So if I want to have quick settings, I can go to edit quick settings. I can, let's say I want to go to the sounds and notifications all the time. Let's say I frequently visit that setting. I can tap it, go back out, and now that's going to show up underneath the quick settings option. Again, beautiful ways to customize your phone. Now while we're talking about customization, let's take a look at the lock screen. So if you turn the device off and on, you'll see that you've got the lock screen and you can swipe to unlock just like that. Now if we go into the personal tab and under lock screen and security, I can tap this and I can customize my lock screen. The one thing I can do is I can tap the show information tab. You've got three options. You can enable the dual clock, you can enable the weather, and you can enable the owner information to show on your lock screen. Now the owner information, if you tap this, you can type in anything. So let me just type in Saki Tech and click done. And let me enable the weather. So weather is enabled. Make sure this is turned on, okay? And then also you can enable or disable dual clock. Now if I turn the device off and turn it on, there's my owner information, Saki Tech, and there's the weather. Alrighty? So that is how you customize your lock screen if you want to. Now you can use this thing right over here to display a little quote that you may like. So it doesn't have to be your name, it can be a sentence. And of course, if we go back out here, you've got all these other things you can do. You can tap screen lock type, and this is going to enable security. And you've got all these options. You can set a pattern to unlock your device. You can set a pin number. You can set a password, a high security password. And you can also, of course, use your fingerprints because the Samsung Galaxy Note 5 comes with a high quality fingerprint sensor. All you would have to do is tap this guy and follow the instructions and that's going to record your, your fingerprint which you can then use to unlock your device every single time seamlessly, quickly and easily. Also when you're unlocking your phone, so let me just unlock this, as you can see you get this nice effect. That's called the sparkling bubbles effect. You can change that if you don't like it. So if you go into unlock effect from here you can pick colored droplets. Alrighty, so if I now unlock my device, it's going to be water drops. And I can also do none, so you don't have any unlocking effect. But even the basic effect is pretty nice. So if I go back in here, that's the basic unlocking effect, which is also none. Let's go back out here real quick and go back out one more time. And once again, if you go into themes, you can update the entire scheme of your themes. We already talked about this. You can also access this from the home screen by pinching and going into the themes right from here. But as always, there are multiple ways to get things done on an Android phone. So settings and themes. Now let's say this phone is a little bit too complicated for you guys to figure out. So what you can do is you can enable easy mode. So if I tap easy mode, and this is gonna be under settings and personal, tap easy mode, and from here, I can tap on that, and then I can go down here and I want to enable all the apps that I want to show on my easy mode. Okay, so I can disable if I don't want the music, I can just take that off. Go up here, click done. And as you can see, this is the easy mode screen. It looks much more simple than what we're looking at right now. Okay, you can go to the phone right from here. And even the phone is going to be in the easy mode interface. So let's go back out. Let's say you want to go back to the complicated things. You go over, you tap on settings, you tap on easy mode at the bottom, and you go to the standard mode immediately. Click done. Takes a couple seconds and you're back in business. All right, so we message a lot on our phone, so it's only natural to customize our messaging application. So if you go into the messaging application right over here, 
you got a couple nice options you can play around with. The first one is on the top here, it says tap to add priority senders. So if you talk to your brother a lot, if you talk to your girlfriend a lot, you can add them right on top here so they're quickly accessible to create an instant message. So let's tap on this and let's uh, say I want to text with my brother often. So I'm going to tap bro. I'm going to click done. So now my brother is going to show up on the top here and every time I want to send him a message, I can tap on his icon and that's going to launch a message and I can start typing away and click send right away. And if you go back here, you can add as many priority contacts as you want for quick access right inside the messaging application. Now let's say you want to delete one of these guys. All you got to do is you go to more and you tap on edit, Pro oops, click more, edit priority contacts and click that red bar next to the icon and that takes him right off and then click done and it's not there anymore. So that's how you enable or disable priority senders for the messages application. The other thing you can do is you can go to more, you can tap on the font size and from here you can increase the font size for your messages. Make sure you disable use phone font sizes. So if I disable this then I can individually tweak the size of the text in my actual messaging application. So if I go in here, as you can see, you get nice and big text. And if I want to make it bigger, I can pinch on the screen and make it bigger or pinch in and make it smaller. Okay, so go back out and let's go back into more. And the other setting I want to talk about, which is my favorite for this app, is if you go into settings, you can go to backgrounds and bubbles. And from here, you can customize the way your text messages look. Change the background picture, change the way these bubbles look. So I can have this thing right over here. And then go back out. And if I go into any of these messages that I have a conversation with, it's going to show the newly picked option. And we're not done yet. So if you go into the more, and if you tap on settings, you have one more thing here that says even more settings. You can tap this guy. And from here, you can enable split view. What that's going to do for you is when your phone is in this orientation, it's going to give you a nice split view. So as you can see on, the, on this side, you see your contacts, your conversations. On this side, you see the actual text messages. So let's put this back to normal orientation. And as you can see, the split view disappears. And finally, let's go back into more go into settings and tap on quick responses. Over here, you can type in anything over here, click this plus signal, and that's gonna give you something that you, that you can use over and over from the quick response option. So if I go into a text message, all I have to do is if I'm chatting with this number over here, I can tap more, I can tap quick responses, and I can pick from the menu. As you can see, the one I added is shown at the bottom. So you can create your own unique quick responses. If you simply tap on it, it goes right there and you can send this right over. Now, of course, one of the biggest features of the Samsung phones is multitasking. So if I tap this button over here, as you can see, it brings up all the windows that I've been working with so far. And what else I can do is I can tap this icon. As you can see, there's an X there. If I tap the X, it closes that window. Alrighty, but there's another icon right next to it. If I tap this, it allows me to enable the multitasking mode. So on the top, I could be doing a text message and at the bottom, I can pick any other compatible app. Let's uh, do the maps over here. And now I've got the maps running at the bottom and I've got the messaging application running on the top. I could be texting somebody and looking for directions at the same time. And of course, over here, if I tap here, this becomes the primary window. If I tap here, this becomes the primary window. And if I tap this circle in the middle, you get all kinds of options where you can maximize this window, you can minimize this window, or you can simply tap this and that's gonna swap their position. And again, tap this guy again, click X, and that closes the window that was selected and you're back in business. And that's the multitasking mode. So with the multitasking mode, you could be watching a video on the top or the bottom and you could be texting on the other side. 
It's an absolutely fantastic feature. Now one more thing you guys can do with the multitasking is if you've got nothing going on, if you have a clean slate, well let's go over here and we have no recent apps, you can tap and hold this button right over here, the multitasking button, and you can start a fresh instance of a multitasking. So let's tap this and that puts the message on the top and then I can go over here. Let's say I want to do some shopping while I'm talking to a friend. I can tap this. Now I got Amazon at the bottom and messaging on the top and I started this off completely from a blank slate. Okay, next up I want to talk about the phone application. So if you go into the phone application, you've got a couple options here. Obviously you have the log, you got the favorites, you got the contacts. Now what you can do is you can go into the keypad right over here and you can assign a speed dial to each one of these numbers. So go into a contact, pick the contact you, that you like, click more and then tap on speed dial and from here what you can do is you can pick a number that you want to assign that contact to number one is mostly reserved for voicemail so number two you have to tap plus and now Altair is assigned to number two so if I go back out here if I tap the keypad if I press and hold number two that's going to call Ezio directly and of course, I can do this for multiple people. As a matter of fact, I can add many, many people to the speed dial. So let me show you what I mean by that. Because you only have nine numbers here. So how do you add more than nine speed dial contacts? So if you go to contacts, and let's just pick Kenway, tap more, and tap speed dial. Let's go to number 16. Now if I go back out here, there's no way I can press and hold number 16. So in this case, what you do is you tap 1, you tap 6, and that brings up Kenway for quick and easy access right on top, and you can tap right on him and then start calling him immediately. So that's how you do speed dial. Now, of course, you can always go into the settings, and if you go to display, which is going to be under device, you can change the font size and font type for the entire scheme of your phone. So if you go in here, you've got several options. You can change the size of the font across the board, and you can also pick this nice, sexy font. So you can pick this uh, rosemary font, and you click Done. And as you can see, everything all over the phone has changed to that font, so the phone now looks much more fancy. If you go back into the settings, you can also go to device, display, font. At the bottom, you can download brand new fonts. So if you tap this, it's going to take you to a store. And from here, you can either pay or you can get some of these for free. But you have all these options to customize your phone even further. Now, one more thing I want to show you guys about the phone application is if you go to contacts, right? And if you go to, here's a contact right here. If you click more and go to settings, you have this option to swipe to call or send messages. And if you enable this, when you're looking at a contact, you can swipe to the left, and that's going to take you to the text message application. So you can simply start texting with that person. Back in the phones app, in the contacts, if you swipe to the right, that starts to actually call the person. So these are two nice shortcuts to use to message or call people just by swiping left or right. Now here's a cool tip. If you go into the settings of your phone, and if you go to personal, and at the bottom here, you will see accessibility, tap this guy, go to vision, and scroll all the way at the bottom, and you'll see a gray scale mode. You can tap this button, and your phone is going to turn into a black and white phone. No colors, just gray scale. Now, if I go back into that setting, tap on accessibility, vision, all the way down, you can also enable negative colors. So let's turn the colors on and negate everything across the board. So now I have a different looking phone with negated colors, but this is going to apply across the board. So when you go out, you're going to see this thing right over here. Alrighty, go into the settings, personal, accessibility, vision, all the way down, negate colors. Now let's go back into accessibility and this time go into dexterity and interaction. So if, we, if you tap this, there's something here that I'd really like. It's called the assistant menu. If you tap this guy, you can enable this menu and you'll have this tiny floating icon just flying anywhere that you want it to go. So put it right there. 
Now if you tap on it, you actually get access to the same buttons that are at the bottom over here. Instead of being hardware, they're going to be software keys. And not only that, you actually have, if you tap this arrow, you can do more things. You can change the volume, you can lock the device by tapping that thing, okay? If you tap it again, go down, you can go to the menu settings right from here if you wanted to, alrighty? Took us right back where we were. If you tap this again, you've got all these nice options. You can turn on the magnifier and whatnot. So again, if you go into the assistant menu and enable it, you do get these nice options and they all reside underneath accessibility. All right, so let's go back into the settings and let's go under system. Here we have a couple of amazing options. Now one of them is battery. If you tap the battery, you've got a couple options. You've got the power saving mode and you've got the ultra power savings mode. Now this guy here, transforms your phone into a bare bones device. So let's enable it so you can see what I'm talking about. And basically when you, what you want to do is if you have low battery life and you have no access to a charger, you want to turn this on so, to, so as to extend your battery life. So let's just agree to this thing and this is all you get. Now simply by being in this mode, your battery will last you a long, long time. Even if you had 10% battery life, this mode will last you a day, alrighty? So let's go out to more. Of course, you wanna turn this off when you finally get to a charger to go back into the colorful, beautiful world. Now let's go back into the settings. Let's go back to the device, system, and the battery. So as you can see, here's the ultra power mode. Here's the display battery percentage option. If you turn this off, the percentage symbol on the top disappears. If you turn it on, it comes right back. And over here, and here you get a nice graph. And if you scroll down, it shows you what portion of your device has been using most of your battery. And it also tells you how much you've been using since the last charge. So if you fully charge your device and then fully deplete your device, this number will give you an accurate estimation of how long your battery life is, okay? So you can go and you can fully charge the device and then unplug it and then use it all day, let the battery die. And then it's gonna tell you your phone lasted, you know, 12 hours, 13 hours, 20 hours with a single charge. So this gives you a nice estimate of what to expect in real life when you go out there. Let's go back out here. And if you go into the storage, that's another story. Now here, the total space on the phone is 64 gigs. This is what's available right now. This is what the system is using right now. This is what I'm using in various different places. If I tap on it, it will give me some nice details. So applications are taking that much. Pictures is taking 23 megabytes and audio is only taking three megabytes. If I go back out here, you got some cached data. If you tap it, it allows you to delete that. So if that is a big number down here and you have auto, you're out of space, tap this guy and tap delete. Alrighty. And then you can also go into miscellaneous files and it's just going to show you what kind of uh, space is being utilized by these different guys. You can tap on it and you can delete everything in that folder if you so please. So the reason I want to talk about this area is because it's a nice storage management feature. So this is how you keep track of what's going on with your phone's storage. Let's go back out over here. And the other thing I'm gonna show you guys, if you scroll over to the connections, over here you'll see something called data usage. Now data is very important, so you have to properly manage it. So if you tap this guy, this over here allows you to set mobile data limits. So if you only have two gigabytes of data available to you per month, you wanna turn this thing on, and you wanna grab this red bar right over here and you wanna drop it to two, let's put this down. So the red bar has to be at two gigs. What happens is once the phone reaches two gigs of usage within a month, it turns off the data. So you don't go over it accidentally and pay more money than you normally should. Now there's a cool feature that goes with this and that's the warning. So this is where the data gets shut off at the red bar. 
but at the black bar you can actually have the phone issue you a warning so if you were using your data and you hit 1.3 gigabytes sometime within the month the phone is going to issue a warning telling you hey here's a warning you're about to come close to your maximum limit and that's going to be two but once it hits two gigabytes it is going to shut off that data and that is going to save you money furthermore if you scroll down over here you'll see that the phone will tell you what portion of your phone is using the data the most so that's the Google Play Store I've been downloading a couple of apps so it's telling me that this application has used this much data so I'm sure you guys will be seeing YouTube and other Chrome and other stuff like that which uses a lot of data browsing the web and watching videos now if you tap these things you get even more details and I, I don't know about you guys but I love details so when you go in here it gives you even an in-depth analysis of the uh, data usage and if there's an app that is using too much data you can restrict that app from wasting your data by tapping this button over here and it says restrict background data so this application will not use your data when it's not in use it's a great way to save some data all right so let's go back out here and you can do the same thing with the Wi-Fi so if you tap on more on the top you can actually tap this and that's going to give you a snapshot of your Wi-Fi you can switch right over and this is the same kind of information you have for the Wi-Fi so the Wi-Fi I used Google Play Store for 76 megabytes and that's an application that I know that I downloaded okay so as you can see I did not use that with my data but I used it with my Wi-Fi you should always download beefy applications using Wi-Fi so you can manage your Wi-Fi and your mobile data right in there in this data usage screen great way to stay on top of things by the way if you guys look at the bottom here you'll see some capacitive buttons and every time I tap them they light up alrighty so I can actually tweak that a little bit so if I go into the settings if I go to device under display I can go to touch key light duration if I tap this guy I can have him remain on for 1.5 seconds as you can see they turned off immediately I can actually have them remain on for six seconds I can always keep them off and I, I can also always keep them on okay so now no matter what you do these guys as long as the phone is turned on they're gonna be on and visible to you now perhaps you guys know that when you get a text message when you get a call when you get an email on the top there's a tiny little LED indicator that lights up and notifies you that something has happened so if you're upstairs and somebody send you a text message you come downstairs and a little LED light will be blinking on the top right over here if you don't want that thing you can disable it so all you have to do is go into the settings go into sound and notifications under device tap on it at the bottom it says LED indicator simply turn that off and you will no more get any blinking indicators on the top of your phone now while we are here uh, Samsung comes with some amazing options for sound quality so if you have headphones attached to your phone only if you do you can go in here and you can tweak these settings okay and these settings allow you to change the quality of the sound you receive from your headphones so with this guy for example you can have a beautiful rich surround sound effect if you have it enabled and if you have the headphones attached and with this guy you can recreate the resolution of the music and with this one you can do some other stuff these are options to look at if you guys are listeners of music and watchers of movies on your smartphones with the headphones attached all right give me a thumbs up if you like this video if you have any questions comments concerns drop them down below in the comments section subscribe to my channel for more videos to come and make sure you guys follow me on Twitter and on Facebook. The links will be down below in the description. Have a great day.